What's going on guys? Welcome to Hugo Builds. It's been a while. I'm not going to make excuses. I just have a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, working full time. I'm teaching a college course at the local community college here. And um, we've just been enjoying the house after the kind of big rush to actually get it all done. We've been living in it since uh, September this year. So maybe like five, six months or something like that at the moment. The important thing now is to get the basement finished. As you can see behind me, uh, it's still just kind of bare studs. We planned on renting this out to make it a basement apartment from the beginning since winter's coming to an end. Uh, and then the summer is gonna bring a whole bunch more projects on the outside. We have a bunch of landscaping to do, the driveway, a deck, yada, yada, yada. So let's get started on the basement. All right, so as you can see, the basement is still completely unfinished. All the insulation was done at the same time as the uh, rest of the house last winter. We put up the vapor barrier. Like I explained, we actually didn't need a vapor barrier because behind this insulation is uh, two inches of pink uh, XPS foam and that is all taped up and sealed, so that acts as our vapor barrier. So I'll give you guys a quick tour of what I'm envisioning for the basement. I'll overlay a plan so you can kind of understand. Uh, here we're standing in the entrance to upstairs, as you can see. And down the stairs, we have a closet here which is actually full of our oak treads and risers. And then you have essentially one big open space for the kind of living, dining, and kitchen area. The ceilings here are taller than typical ceiling basements. I think we have about eight and a half feet here and a big window at the front. Over here, we're going to have a kitchen. We're gonna be doing the same as upstairs, just an Ikea kitchen. I don't think we'll be going with Swedish doors uh, for down here just because it was more expensive, but we will have a fairly nice kitchen here uh, with a small kind of peninsula island coming out here. You can see the plumbing in the wall there. That's gonna go underneath the island uh, and the sink is probably gonna be in the island facing the rest of the stuff here. Now, if we move towards the back here, this is going to be kind of lower head space to cover up uh, all the um, mechanical stuff up there. And here is the bathroom. We're going to do vanity up back there, toilet and bath, really typical. And finally, we have the bedroom. The bedroom is actually quite large. And last but not least, we have the mechanical room here. This is some more storage over here. In a second, we're gonna have to actually um, cover up the sump pump and the pipes going up with the box in the corner, and then we'll build a little bench down here all the way across with uh, access so that we can get to the water meter uh, and the uh, backwater valve. In order to actually frame that corner, I'll need to get that cleaned up, so I'll do that real quick, and then, uh, then we'll get to some framing. All right, so I went ahead and cut these bottom plates this corner here is going to be full height wall. All right, for the bottom plates, I just realized that I had bought some pressure treated for these bottom plates, especially around the sump pump. In case there's a backup, you don't want all this wood to rot. So just in order to protect that, it's always good practice. We're going to put some, this is just some reused vapor barrier under here. I recut these with uh, pressure treated. All right, so let's go ahead and get this little uh, wall in place. A few hours ago, my camera died, but I stopped for a little bit for uh, lunch and stuff. Um, so I'll fill you in on what I did. I finished off this little bench 
I still need to add a 2x4 running across the back. I'll have to stop now because I actually ran out of wood, so I'll get I'll jump on those Z-girts. I just uh, put in these um, Tapcon screws. So using the bit that comes with and my drill on with the uh, hammer attachment, I put one in every stud for all the uh, bottom plates directly into the concrete slab. I also uh, added these and uh, other pieces of wood just to uh, reinforce everything so that everything's really solid, there's really no movement in all of this. And once that 2x4 is in the back here, I'll run some cross braces and make a top for this. And then this face will get drywalled and the top will be some sort of... Um, some sort of wood. I think we might reuse some old flooring and make a little trim out of it and uh, throw on some cushions there for the tenant. Now that I'm done working on the bench and the uh, framing for today, I'll get started on the uh, on the ceiling. We'll get started on the Z-girts. That took a little while. That'll be it for tonight, I guess. Uh, I'm getting pretty tired. I um, got to finish up a little bit of framing, so we'll order more wood for um, the framing back there. The resilient channels or the Z girts are done in this main room. I'll finish framing this bulkhead around uh, mechanical stuff, and that'll go down all the way down into the mechanical room. I have to order a bathtub for the bathroom because that needs to be in before uh, drywall. I'll start doing the curdy board on there as well next time. Essentially what we're trying to do is get everything ready for drywall. As you can remember from upstairs, getting everything ready for drywall is kind of a really big rush. And then you start seeing everything come together. Once uh, the drywall's done, the paint's done, then you could just uh, start doing finishes. And the finishes down here are going to be, you know, probably quite a bit simpler than they were upstairs since this is a rental unit, but they'll still require quite a bit of time. So, till next time. It is the next weekend. It's another beautiful day. We're gonna keep going on the basement. As I talked about last time, I ordered the bathtub. I ordered a bunch of plumbing stuff that could be done before uh, the drywall. So all that mixing valve and stuff needs to be in um, then. So I'm waiting on that order. With that order, I ordered a whole bunch of wood and it still hasn't come in. So unfortunately, I'll have to uh, work with what I got. So I might be able to finish this bulkhead above here today. Uh, I won't be able to completely finish the bench here, but I will keep going on the resilient channels on uh, the bathroom and in the uh, bedroom. Uh, we also got the mechanical guy in. He's going to finish the returns on the ducts. Uh, we're also going to put in a hood fan for, or at least a rough in for a hood fan. And then I got my drywall guy that came in to uh, take a look. What's really cool about that is it's actually a guy I grew up with that just happened to uh, be a drywaller when I hired the company. I didn't know that's what he did. We hadn't talked in a few years and you know, lo and behold, he showed up and he was doing the drywall for the house. So I called him up. So he's gonna do the basement again. He did a really good job upstairs. So we're really on track. Now that uh, we set this all in motion, let's get started on some of the resilient channels and hope we can finish that off today. All right, so as you can see, I did uh, the bulk of the room here. Some of you with a good eye might have actually noticed <coughs> Oh, sorry, fiberglass. Some of you with a good eye might have noticed that I'm actually uh, doing it 24 inches on center here. I was reading the manufacturer's specs throughout the week and they said that you can actually go 24 inch on center, so I'm gonna save myself a few resilient channels, make sure I have enough. I'm gonna move on to the bathroom now, even though I still have a few little cuts to make here. Uh, just because I want to make sure that I have enough long pieces and then I'll come back and fill all these uh, little gaps with smaller leftover pieces, kind of like here. Alright, let's get started on the bathroom. Before we get too uh, far into installing these in the bathroom, I'll show you guys here. These are the resilient channels. I cut them all down to length, so these were all five feet to span perpendicular to the bathroom length. And you can see here, I'll show you a quicker example, but there's only one nailing surface or um, 
screwing surface on the one side and the other kind of just hangs uh, in the air. There's really nothing tricky to install these. I'll show you guys how I do one and essentially all it is is that you screw it in on one side like strapping. You make sure that there's a little bit of room uh, against the edges so that it can hang. I don't think you guys need any instruction to do this. It's really simple and like I said um, you can do 16 on center. I'm doing 24 on center here, 24 on center in the washroom. Let's get one of these started and I'll show you guys how to do that. It doesn't really matter which side you go on. When I'm at the edge of the wall, I try to make the uh, the overhanging edge uh, towards the wall. And then, you know, so the last one is flipped. So I'll just follow this kind of convention where they're facing that way all the way across. And then on the last one, I'll flip so that the drywall can be screwed uh, as close to the um, edge as possible. I'm using uh, one and a quarter regular drywall screws for wood. When you install the drywall, on here you want to be using drywall screws that aren't or that are for metal sorry so with a thinner thread uh, essentially what you're tr really trying to avoid is hitting the stud with your drywall screw so you want them short enough or what you can do is that you actually make sure that you're screwing in between studs so that you get the um, so that the resilient channel can actually do its job and flex a little bit if you're screwing it into the stud or to the joist sorry Essentially, you're removing all that flex and you're not going to get that sound um, reduction. Just putting it up against the ceiling. I'm doing two screws per joist just to be sure, but I think one would be fine. Although, don't take my word on that read all the manufacturer's instructions before doing any sort of insulation. All right, so that's the first one. Forgot to mention, you could just use regular uh, tin snips if you need to cut these. Uh, they're super easy and soft to cut and uh, yeah, let's time lapse the rest of this and move on to something else. I'm getting pretty bored. All right, so now that we are done the resilient channel in most of the rooms, I'm going to tackle this uh, bulkhead right here. It's almost done. I just need to uh, put a few more cross braces. The wood was a little warped from being in the basement, and uh, so it's not super straight. I'll try to do my best to see if I can straighten that out, and then... I, I'm i super happy. I just found a big pile of uh, resilient channels left. I have like a dozen left. I thought I was out and I had to, you know, delay this for another few days, but I have a few here. So we'll finish off those cross uh, bracing on this bulkhead and then uh, it's still not framed by the mechanical room there that I need some lumber, but that is should be coming uh, pretty soon. But we will start to put in the resilient channels here. And I'll probably even put some on the uh, vertical surface here. This stuff can be used for walls. So essentially all noise transmission from the ceiling uh, will get kind of <clears throat> attenuated in those resilient channels. So um, hopefully I have enough and then I can do other things like this little this box here uh, we have the sump pump down there and uh, in the spring that tends to get pretty loud this is also the main drain for the uh, for the master bedroom that goes down here so just the water coming down at every flush is pretty loud so I will try to insulate this as much as I can so I will put Roxel uh, in this and then we'll put resilient channel in front of that and I'll try to maybe put something a bit heavier in front of the drain there so that we're not uh, so that the tenant doesn't hear every flush down here so let's get started on this bulkhead and see where we get to I got that corner figured out off camera. As you saw me try and fail a bunch of times, I had to um, just wedge in a two by four to pry it. Yeah, just get enough leverage on that and then put my screws in. It straightened out quite a bit. Yeah. 
So I have all the framing done up to the um, the hallway over there. I need longer pieces for that. I currently don't have the wood. I'm waiting for the delivery. So we'll start on the uh, Zed girts up here. I do have to mention, this is a weird way to make a bulkhead. I don't know why I started making it like this. Uh, it could have been done way more efficiently. I don't know, I, I got started on this and I just had to finish. I didn't want to waste any more wood, so. So I finished up uh, all the little odds and ends, so all the little strapping around kind of the air ducts, uh, I did that here. The little pieces that were missing um, in the bedroom, and then so I went around kind of fixed all this up kind of like that here. All done in this room as well. Now I want to insulate uh, the sump pump and then uh, hopefully in a few days we get the wood for the back of the bench and to finish up this bulkhead and then I think we'll be pretty much, the ceiling will be ready for drywall. We'll have a little bit of uh, work to do for rough electrical, rough plumbing, but we're really not that far off. And now to finish off this insulation, this I'm gonna finish off the uh, wall between the bedroom and the mechanical room. All right, so I only had a few pieces of insulation left. I'll have to go pick up another bag because there's still a few things I wanna insulate. I really wanna make sure that the basement apartment is as um, silent as possible. Uh, one last thing that I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna put up some uh, curdy board on the wall uh, it's a big sheet, it's kind of taking up some room, so I'm trying to just use the materials that I have and again, the curdy board is going to have to be up before the drywall so that the drywall guy can butt up right against it and do a, a joint there, uh, feather that out. I only have a single sheet of this stuff, this is all left over from upstairs, but curdy board is about $70 Canadian with uh, my discount, so uh, it was really good to keep it. I'll probably need one or two. Uh, I'll put the one up I have right now. I'll have to remove a bit of drywall um, in the end there, and then um, I think that'll be it. There's actually special mounting hardware, as you saw in the last video. It's kind of these washers and screws that come with this. They look like fairly, almost like drywall screws. And uh, that just makes it so that your screw just sinks in, or it doesn't sink in. So you need these, this special hardware. This is all stuff that I had from uh, the bathroom build upstairs. So I can see the battery is running out, so that will do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this part one of the basement renovation, and um, let me know what you think of the uh, new format of the kind of day by day. We'll try to pump out a few more videos, just always have once a week uh, once these get start coming up. So I'll have a bit more time to work in the basement and work on these videos. So till next time, see you guys.